have a look how domain separation works in workflows and in our next tutorial we will have a look how domain separation works in flows so let's quickly start uh, before we go for the practical exercise sessions uh, on how domain separation works let's understand some of the uh, key terms what uh, uh, we use uh, or how we use with workflows and uh, how the domain separation uh, behaves so we first need to understand what domain is usually selected when a record is created in the system. So it completely depends on the user who is logged in. So if a user is assigned to the parent domain, workflow domain would be parent. If user is assigned to any of the child domain, the workflow uh, will be triggered whatever it is in child domain. So, if there is no customized child domain workflow edges, then parent domain uh, workflow will be inherited. So, type of support is standard here. Uh, there are three tables which are in use when we uh, when we talk about the domain separation in workflows. So, first one is workflow. Second is workflow version. Third is workflow context. So, workflow is uh, where we have the workflow name and uh, it also depict which domain this workflow belongs to. Workflow version does not have the domain record, but it inherits the domain from its parent workflow. So if parent workflow in child domain, then workflow version is running in child domain. And workflow context runs based on the domain. When a user starts a new workflow, the workflow runs with the user domain set. So, uh, for an example, if we are using an API and uh, API user is in child domain, then workflow will be triggered in child domain. Yeah, let's understand the last point here. The workflow preserve a user domain and credentials until an activity causes the workflow to wait. So, for an example, let's say workflow is requiring an approval and uh, that particular workflow was triggered in child domain using a specific user. Then workflow activity wait until that particular domain or user is triggering that particular workflow or resuming that particular workflow from that state. So workflow activity monitor maintain that state like who was the user who triggered it and what was the domain in it. If you need to, uh, to go to further documentation, there is the service now doc link. You can go through. So what we are going to do today is. Uh, we will create a workflow in our parent domain and then we will have a look how exactly it is working when we are going to create a change record. So what we are going to do, we will create a uh, workflow for the change and we will try to set some of the field. Then we will check out the same workflow in one of the child domain and we will check the behavior. Okay, so let's go to the instance. This is our instance. Here we have a parent domain named as parent and two child under that parent, ABC and HBC. Okay, so uh, right now if you see this red circle, that means I have selected one of the uh, domain that is parent. Alright, and uh, let me refresh all windows so that we ensure like you know everything is running under parent domain only. Okay, so let's create a workflow. Uh, so let's go to the workflow editor, and I'm I'm going to create a new workflow. So what we are going to do? Let's have a look on the change record here. What we are going to do for an emergency change? We will set justification field or some of the other fields as part of our workflow. So let's hit type this emergency. And I want this workflow to run. 
So I'm not setting up any uh, domain in these conditions. Okay, and uh, um, just set some of the fields on it. So right now we are in and in parent domain. I'm only uh, setting up one field justification. And I'm setting up this is parent domain and uh, Validate and publish. If you notice, uh, here you can see published and uh, you can see the domain as well. Okay, so this is uh, all this is now published in parent domain. Now let's create a new change. So this is change record, I'm going to create now. Uh, I'm saving this record. Okay, request for approval. Just for the sound. And if you have a look, this is a parent domain distribution. This has got sacked from the workflow return. Okay, so I have opened some of the windows as well earlier. So wf underscore workflow, that's the table where all workflows are stored. Let's refresh it and have a look uh, on for the workflow which we just created. So this is the workflow and if you see the domain for this workflow is parent. Okay, and workflow version, let's have a look if we have something. So you can see this uh, here, uh, this particular workflow is already is also created here and uh, this particular table does not have any domain field. So uh, we can have a look. This is workflow version and uh, there is no domain field adjust. So that means whenever this workflow is going to run, it is going to pick the uh, domain from this particular table. Workflow. Okay, if we have a look here, uh, show workflow. Then it shows this particular workflow part trigger. Okay, now uh, let's, yeah, let's change the domain and make some changes to the uh, part. So I'm going to ABC domain now. Let's leave this on top. So let's use this window usually opens, right? So let's open the workflow. And you you can see this is published in parent domain, but I want like whenever it is in ABC, I want this uh, particular workflow to behave separately or differently. Okay, what I want along with the justification probably the back out field should also be fit. So let's check out, and uh, you can see a new workflow got created in parent ABC. Okay, as uh, as I checked out in ABC, now you can see here. Domain also gets changed for us. Okay, now I can make any change in this uh, uh, workflow as I need for ABC domain. So I want to, uh, this is not a parent domain, I will say this is a ABC domain justification. And I also want a uh, backout field, backout plan also to be filled up. Uh, this is uh, uh, no backout needed. Okay, and update it. And uh, we need to check in and publish before we uh, put this in production. So, publish this again. So, you can see a new workflow get published. Let's have a look on the version. Let's have a look on the workflow. 
this. So, you can have a look. As I am in ABC workflow, so it is not showing me anything for the parent. Okay, it is only showing me the entry which is which exists in ABC. But this does not mean like there is no entry in parent. So let's. Uh, uh, yeah, be before I again turn or go back to the parent, let's create a change record here and see which workflow gets to that. So, right now I am under ABC domain and I am creating an emergency change. Okay, and uh, then let's submit. I have not put any condition on any of these things. As I submitted it, move to the next window. Then change three double zero. And if you have a look, uh, ABC domain but for trigger, right? Now uh, let's change uh, again. Uh, let's have a look uh, and uh, again go back to the parent domain. So now I am in parent domain, refresh this particular window and it is showing the parent domain workflow. Uh, okay, now what is going to happen if I select the domain as XYZ? So ideally, the parent workflow should trigger for XYZ because I have not overridden any thing for xyz domain okay this is how we need to set uh, the workflow in top domain or parent domain so that it can be inherited by all child and uh, if we request any customization to any uh, specific uh, child then we can check out that workflow and check it. so let's uh, create and uh, have a look on change in xyz I am yeah, not making any change, just save it. So as soon as I save it, my workflow ideally should trigger because it will make an entry into change request trigger. And you can see parent domain workflow got trigger here. So this explains how the workflow works. In our next session, uh, we will have a look how the flow designer works because there is a little, little different uh, concept in flow design. Thank you for today. Thank you.